Was it? We all need uh, some positive distraction today. <laughs> Although there's lots of positivity. It's, it seems like there's a lot of momentum building. It's great. It's true. It's true. The, the sun is out. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, great. It looks like maybe we're, we're now live. So super. Well, maybe let's go ahead and get started then. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm William Crow. I am the director of the Lehigh University Art Galleries and professor of practice in the Department of Art, Architecture, and Design. Um, and we're really delighted to welcome you here today to LUAG at Lunch. Um, and this is a student-led series of programs that focus on works of art from Lehigh's art collection. And they're intended to be informal conversations where we talk about these works of art um, and you know, hopefully share ideas and thoughts and opinions so everyone is welcome to participate. Um, so it's my great pleasure to turn things over to Zachary Powers, who's going to be um, leading a discussion with us about some works of art that I think are on a very timely and relevant topic um, this week in particular. So with that, um, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Zachary. Thank you, Professor. So my name is Zachary Powers. I'm a senior at Lehigh. Uh, I'm in the business school, so a little bit different than the arts program that I'm in, but today I'm just going to go through a couple photographs uh, but I encourage you guys to, you know, uh, I know in this time of Zoom, it's a little bit weird and uh, uncomfortable, but I appreciate it if you guys have your videos on. I want to be a discussion because it's not nice for me to just talk to you guys. I want you to gauge and tell me how you're thinking because my opinion is not the right one. It's just one of the many. So I wanted to discuss, you know, the theme of uplifting and inspiring, especially in this time, whether the elections or COVID, and also the beautiful day of Friday, with the sunny weather that we're having here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. But I wanted to, you know, uh, go through a couple photographs, get your opinion about what you see from them, what makes them, you know, show inspiration and happiness and uplifting, and your opinion upon that. So with that. I'm going to share my screen and thank you all for uh, coming because I know you guys can do anything you want with your Friday. So here we are. Does everyone see this? Cool, cool, cool. So let me get in the present mode. So as I said, how we're going to figure out how artists uplift and inspire. So I'm going, let's see. So I'm doing something a, a, a little bit different. I'm gonna go through the photographs kind of quickly. Uh, not too quickly, you can't see it, but a little bit quickly that, you know, I wanna see what you first notice about it and maybe go into a little bit of depth about why. And, you know, I said that, kind of give it away that the theme is uplifting and inspiration, but that doesn't mean that has to be what you see. Cause some of the photographs might get, give you a different place of time and, and a feeling behind it because where it's at in the environment situation. So without further, further or do, I'll start. And by the way, these are from uh, two of the photographs are the same artist or photographer, one of them's different. I'm not gonna tell you which two versus one. All right, so, you know, with that, I just want to go into a little bit about, you know, what you notice from those first three photographs. There's no right or wrong answer. And I can tell you a little bit about, you know, what I saw the first one obviously was uh, a man, two men, and one seems to be grabbing onto one another. Second one seemed to be some uh, period of, you know, of history, let's say, with the cranes in the background. And then the third one is it's just a woman you know, looking up to the stars, uh, that's with the blue sky. Uh, but that's just a very big synopsis of what those photographs are. So do you guys notice anything, anything that stood out to you, you know, the moods of them? The mic, if you feel the need to grab the mic, please go ahead. Um, in the first one, I the first thing I noticed about it was the guy on the left, his head was kind of like bowed down, whereas the other guys was like straight and so I, that gave me the impression that he was possibly like praying or they were just sharing like a special sentiment. Yeah. 
Nora, do you, I know you just unmuted if anything you wanted to say, add on. Yeah, I was going to say um, the second one, uh, I like felt like I could like hear it almost like it looks just like really loud. And then if you look at the next one after, it looks almost like a silent like moment of like grace. So I thought it was interesting how they're both uplifting, but one of them seemed like really loud to me and the other one looked like more peaceful kind of. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Francis, maybe? Uh, yeah, I thought the third one was very hopeful and kind of, it looked like she was being almost like pious and like um, thanking someone like in the heavens or something mm -hmm. i agree i agree it definitely seemed like she was you know looking up uh with her arms like i don't know uh, above her head praying or you know looking looking to something greater or just you know feeling helpless maybe that's another way to look at it that she's having her arms up being like i don't know what to do next but what i guess my question from that is you know what made you maybe the way that the photographs were taken made you see the man uh, bowing down to the other man you know that was there's nothing in the photos right in the center maybe that's it or maybe like the, the the coloring so maybe just something to think about is anything about that specifically how, how the photographs taken made it stood out in a way or the coloring yeah, I would say for the um, last picture you showed, it definitely looked uplifting, but it also looked like they were at like a funeral, maybe, because it seemed like <clears throat> everyone was wearing black. Interesting. Yeah, they were all wearing black. And we'll go into it a little bit later, but you'll see when I uh, actually go a little bit slower than, you know, 10 seconds per photo that there's actually two men in the background who are also wearing black suits. Uh, and she's in the front, but it's a good observation. Anyone else said anything? that they want to add. All right. So now we're going to go through, you know, second noticings. And this is going to be, you know, a little bit similar. You know, it's going to be the same three photos twice. I'm going to go a little bit slower. But here I want to point out, you know, I want you to see what the similarities and differences are between them. And, you know, like a, the theme, if there's a theme, if there's not a theme between them, because, you know, they're even though they're in three different, obviously, time periods or not time periods necessarily but points in time uh they they all have you know similarities and differences between them so i want to go through it one more time uh and i want to see what you guys notice about all that so let me just see if i could some reason it's not lining So now, uh, now you got a little bit of time to look at it and I'm gonna go back and forth. So if anyone wants to see the photos more closely and that really examine them, please let me know. I'd be happy to go back and forth between them. But you know, are there any similarities and differences between the pieces that you notice specifically? So I could uh, start off with a little bit about what I noticed. For this one, it seems like they're in the city and, you know, I could tell because it seems like this guy has a sign that says, God bless you. And in the background, you know, I don't know any towns that have, you know, big scaffold or not scaffolding, but I guess uh, titles of, you know, their stores like that in regular towns. It's usually on the, or awnings, that's the better word for it. So uh, that was very much a contrast, but it seems like this man is, you know, praying to him or taking him under his wing in some way. And maybe you guys have a different opinion on it, or you guys see something different. Is there anything you guys notice about it? Um, I would say that it seems like he's kind of like giving him some advice. It seems like he's giving him like a powerful message, um, just because both their eyes are kind of closed, like they're talking so passionately to each other. So I definitely agree that he's kind of. Uh, maybe being a mentor or providing him some hope or guidance or some motivation. Yeah, definitely. Does anyone else have any thoughts on it? 
Um, I thought it was interesting, the, the hand on the shoulder, because I didn't notice the God bless you thing, but at first, but that makes a lot of sense, because like, in the church, like, in the Catholic church, at least, um, I know, like, putting your hand on someone's shoulder and praying for them is like, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, that's like a sign that you're praying for someone and that like you're there for them. So it's kind of like they're having a moment and connecting and he's like taking his burdens off of him. Yeah, I I completely get that. I And I see that also. And I didn't know that about the Catholic Church about putting your arm on someone. So thank you for you know noticing that and say that. Well, this photo, just to give you some background, it was actually it was taken in the 1970s. So this was towards the end of the civil rights movement to give you some uh, context to where the, the photograph was. So that's not to say that there that has any relation to it, but just to give an idea about you know the time period and, and maybe what they were thinking or what the, the purpose or the action that this, this man was taking on the other man, maybe praying for him, maybe talking to him, maybe you know uh, saying it's gonna be okay. But that was kind of the uplifting theme that I see in this. Does any, do you guys see another theme? It doesn't have to be uplifting. That's what I see. But maybe you guys see something else in the specific photo that I don't notice. And that's, uh, but, you know, everyone's opinion and uh, view is different. Because some people might say that maybe uh, it's, it's aggressive to touch him on the shoulder. You know, maybe, and I'll give you some context to, you know, who the photographer was and, and the background. So it's actually called the Spirit of Uplifted, helping each other Lexington Avenue, New York City. And as I said, it was taken in the 1970s. So Erica Stone was actually the, the person who took this photograph and she was born in Frankfurt, Germany in the 1920s. And she was a member of the Photo League, which is a group of photographers in New York who band together around a range of common social and creative causes. So this could be a picture of her during uh, taking a picture of something during the civil rights movement towards the end of it, capturing that moment of civil change and social change. But she was one of the you know top women in, in photography and she was published all around the world. So that gives you some in text about where this is, but it is in New York City. It's on Lexington Avenue and uh, it's actually called, you know, uplift and helping each other. So it was spot on. So going on to this photo, are there any, uh, you know, similarities and differences between prior photos and this one that you guys see? Anything that sticks out to you? Something that I noticed was the different levels or amounts of like intimacy across each one. So in the last one, um, the woman is kind of having like a personal moment. And then in the first one, it's like a moment between two people. And then in this one, um, even though there is one person singled out, it seems like there's like a crowd underneath him. So I think it's just interesting how like the emotion is portrayed across all three like groups of people. Yeah. And Caroline, I just want to maybe take it a step further and you could say no, but you know, what, what about the photograph specifically you think that goes to this one man or that's the, it's framing itself to be I guess, what about the photograph makes you feel that way? Um, it seems, well, I'm not sure, but it seems to me like, do like because of the expression on his face and his like body language and then him being like singled out from the rest of the crowd, it seems like he's like protesting, um, but I could be wrong. I don't know. No, oh, yeah, it does seem like he's protesting. And if you notice in his hand, it seems like he has like a hammer in his left hand and that's uh i was curious about that he's wearing like a, a belt it could be a tool belt it could be nothing and he has gloves on and i don't know uh does anyone else have any ideas about maybe where this was taken you know if, if this is a protest what is it you know just from the situation so i'll give you uh you know a little bit of context or about a little bit about we talked about in the prior sessions. It was interesting how, you know, these guys are people in the front of the, the photograph are a little bit blurred and it's all concentrating on him. And he's like the center of like one point linear perspective. 
And I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's pretty much where your eye goes. And that's pretty much for paintings solely, but it just seems like the diagonals are just going straight into the center of the photo and he's in the center of it. So I thought that was interesting. But if you guys were in this moment, you know, how would you feel being in it? You know, what do, what do you feel from it? Yeah, Francis, you guys can just talk. Oh, sorry. No, no, it. <laughs> uh, it seems kind of like a turning point because like he's sitting on the edge. He could go either way. And he like he's so passionate about what he's saying to this crowd. It seems like he's inspiring people and like really just turning point is the word I would use to describe this picture. Yeah, yeah. You don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, you know, you don't know what the purpose of the photo is. It seems like there's graffiti on the walls. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? What does that mean? Is that disobeying the government or whoever they're trying to disobey? Anyone else have any ideas about, you know, the feeling? Or how, why you feel like that because of this photo? It's fine if you don't. There's a lot of, you know, different things going on here. Uh, but one thing I want to, you know, I thought that was interesting is it seemed like, seems like there's a lot of chaos. And comparing it to this photo, you said that he looked passionate and aggressive, right, Francis? Uh, but on this previous photo, I don't know why this, there we go. This photo, there's not a lot of passion. It doesn't seem like he's screaming. He's just talking. But I guess, do you guys see a different passion level? And that's all, you know, that's objective. No, there's no right or wrong answer. But is there a different passion level between this photo and this and the, this photo? I mean, I see the first photograph as being um, very inward facing. Like it, the first photograph really contrasts like what these two figures are kind of having this very internal moment or between one another, despite the city around them. and you know, we've all had experiences in kind of crowded cities with everything happening. And then the second one for me feels kind of the opposite. Like there's a lot of um, energy that's coming out of the crowd and certainly this figure that's straddling um, this wall. Like it's hard to tell maybe exactly the feeling that he has, but it's, it's one of intense energy, I think, going out almost, I can't help but think about someone like, um, you know, like a cowboy, <laughs> um, you know, in like a Western film, like on the horse with one hand up and just like really yelling out um, is the impression I get. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he's like very passionate and he's telling the world how passionate he is. And, it, and it's, it's he can, it can be seen as aggressive, it can also be seen as, you know, passion. So I'll give you guys a little bit of the scoop on this specific photograph. Uh, his name, uh, the photographer is named Peter Turnley. And this actually photograph is called The Fall of the Berlin Wall. And it was taken in November 19, any, or uh, it was from the, in a series of moments of the human condition. So he goes around different current events and human condition areas, uh, and he publishes street art. And he's been featured in Newsweek 43 times. Uh, and he draws attention to people who suffer great hardships and injustice and uses his photographs to document, you know, what our world's going through. So he witnessed the fall of the Berlin Wall. So that's what this is, the Berlin Wall. And you see some cranes in the background, the light, and how the Berlin Wall works is maybe you guys have been, haven't been, I'll get into that a little bit later. It's just, there's two walls, actually. And this is the first wall. It's dividing like the East and the West. And that's a whole history lesson. But the, the main idea is that there's a, wall, there's a couple walls. There's one wall, this is the first wall. And there's a second wall 20 feet away and in between there's barbed wire so the communists cannot like, i guess at that point you know the communist side cannot get to the capitalist side to the west and the east so that was the purpose of this wall and this at this point they're actually tearing it down and it was a it was a strong point because there's families that were divided and there are people that couldn't see each other uh, and it was it was devastating because one day they just put up a wall uh so it, this photo just symbolizes, you know, freedom. Because if he would have done that during, you know, the, the climax of the period, he would have been shot down and arrested or 
either or. So just has anyone been to Berlin that could give more context about it and uh, tell us a little bit more? No, it's not a big deal, but how it works is there's just this wall that spans across random parts of the city in Berlin and, and it just divides right in the middle. There's no specific reason why it divides one way versus the other. And right today we see all this graffiti on it to show the past of the times and that, you know, humans prevail and doesn't people are people. And there's actually a famous, uh, you know, artists or not artists, but photograph of two prime figures uh, kissing on one side to show, you know, it does, love is love. It doesn't matter who it is. So uh, that's, a, but that's a different topic, but this photograph of Pierre Turnley, you know, goes in depth about uh, human condition and what's going on in the world and current events. So moving on to the last photo, uh, does anyone have similarities between this one? What do you see here? And I know uh, someone mentioned earlier, um, it's Trevor that there was, uh, seemed like a funeral. And now that you see there's a couple of people in the background, you know, wearing suits or one person in the background wearing black suits. Is there anything else that, you know, tipped you off to that besides the black clothing? Maybe you could look a little bit closer. Yeah, I was trying to see what that was saying, but I couldn't really tell. I think yeah, that maybe help. Yeah, see, and I and I tried looking into it and I couldn't find it. But it was a good, it is, it is a funeral. And it's actually located in Haiti. So you hit it right in the head. And, but what, this, funerals are usually like a sad moment, right? Or it's a, it's a celebration of life. So what, maybe Trevor or anyone else, I guess what makes you feel, what do you feel from this photo? Does it feel like a happy photo, a sad photo? If you were in that moment and that was your pose, how would you be feeling? I would say it kind of depends just because everyone deals with like death differently, but um, it kind of seems like her, at least she feels like he or whoever passed is like free finally. So she, it seems like she might've had like a weight lifted off of her shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Does anyone else have any thoughts about, or their opinions on the art piece? I was going to say it looks kind of like she's just accepting uh, like kind of the circle of life and the fact that everybody has to die like she's just like just throw it on me it's all gonna happen yeah yeah it's it seems like that as well it seems like uh she looks also she's smiling a little bit or not sad she doesn't look like she's crying she looked and she looks i guess relieved but I don't know what specifically makes her me feel like that. So I guess, uh, you know, what do you think they're talking about? And what do you think the guys in the background are talking about in this photo? And what do you think that she's thinking? I mean, I know you said uplifting or even any of the photos, you know, that we talked about. Do you think they're thinking anything right now? You think they're just trying to get through the moment? To me, it looks like like you said, she's feeling uplifted and hap or uh, the weights lift off her shoulders and she's free and whatever's happening is happening. But maybe this man in the background, he uh, on the right, so by the left arm, the first man looks a little bit, you know, stressed. Maybe that's a good word. So you guys have any thought about that, about how the people in the background compare to what she's feeling? Um, the one on the far left is just a silhouette, so you can't really see his face, but it looks like he's facing the woman. Um, and so that could just show that like he is feeling this inspiration that she is feeling and she's like passing it on to other people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely see that. It seems that she, he's, you don't see the face and so maybe that's shadowing. But usually in a photograph, you usually see some faces, uh, but I'm not a photographer. So maybe I don't have the skills like that, but that could be on purpose. That the shadowing, and as you can see behind the woman, there's shadowing on the bench or whatever wall she's on. And that's very clear. So, you know, I guess wrapping up in, you know, comparison to all three, how do you think these three photos compare with black and white versus color 
if this was in color, do you think you have a different opinion or a feel of it? It seems like this is very strong. Well, this one also feels very, very strong, but if it was a black and white, do you think, and you didn't, couldn't see the colors of the graffiti? I think the this picture, if it were in black and white, wouldn't you wouldn't get the same energy from it because I think part of what gave that chaotic feeling was all the like red graffiti and like the crane in the background and like that distinction that contrast between like the dark colors and the red just like helped convey that chaotic feeling. And so if it wasn't black and white, I don't think it would have that same effect. How about compared to this photo or sorry. I'm not trying to pick on you, Caroline. I'm just assassin. Uh... I think this one, since it doesn't rely on color as much as the second one, it probably would have gotten the same message across in black and white, but it still is interesting to see in color because I like how um, like the people are contrasted against like the entirely blue background. I think it's just like, it makes it visually interesting. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely, I, and I, I could see that, that with this photo, if it was in black and white, you know, it, it, you would feel the strongness because it's just, the frame is just one woman and her poses and her body expression, uh, maybe versus this one, which is a little bit more going on in the background and uh, it's more context contextual. So I wanted, uh, you know, as we wrap up this beautiful session, and I appreciate you guys all coming and you know staying with me throughout this. I just want to talk about you know the main themes of this. Uh, maybe what I saw. Maybe you guys could you know have final thoughts. But what I saw was three photographs in this time of chaos of COVID and sitting inside that uplifting and spirit and power. In this photo, I see someone who's you know consoling someone for whatever reason. Someone that's in need that says God bless and thank you. The people on the street in New York City. And this one, you know just power that there's a, a revolution going on that there's change uh it seems like he's very happy and everyone's uh in black or in the bottom of the photo the people are blurry but you could tell that you know there's a lot of gathering and things when people usually gather it's usually good or it's bad but i could tell that if it was a bad thing i don't think someone would be on top of the this berlin wall uh and, and having that pose it seems like a conquer type thing and then lastly, this, and I agree with uh, what you were saying, Caroline, if it was black and white, it wouldn't have as much of a big deal because it's the same, uh, I guess the theme of it is the same, but I feel that something's been uplifted, that it's a higher power, that she feels that, you know, something something's taking up upon her, that she's feeling in a way that put your arms up in the air. And that's not a usual reaction that I have. And maybe I'm sure you guys don't have that either that I put my arms up in the air. So there has to be something within her that's making her feel, you know, rising or uh, powerful. Something that's coming over her. So with that, I wanna say that anyone has any last words about, you know, what your thoughts about the whole, maybe the theme of, uh, you know, happiness, the theme of power, these things that we were talking about throughout the whole presentation, then I mean you could have something else because I have a different interpretation and you know this is a funeral not necessarily a happy thing but the, everyone has different opinions about you know what they get out of photographs so if anyone wants to take the mic to say what you believe in what you got from it. I'll add one thing I, I appreciate your selection of these three photographs because we find inspiration or uplifted both individually among others and then in a community. And I think that each of these three photographs kind of encapsulates that in a sense. Um, and it came up in our last conversation about these photographs, but each of the photographs, um, the individuals or the subjects within it are expressing that feeling with their movement of their body and their arms. Um, so I think that's a really nice tie between the three. So um, I really appreciate your selection of these. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Appreciate it. And yeah, I, I try to select these three because I felt that they all, you know, brought something out of me. And I hope that they brought something out of you in, in any shape, way, or form. So that's what all art is, right? It's you know, beauty in the eye of the beholder, how you feel. So if anyone else has any last comments, yeah. 
It's okay not to, because, you know, maybe, and you, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you guys if you want to, you know, reach out separately or privately. But I want to leave you with one last thing. So there's, uh, this goes into Peter Turnley's, uh, he does his own video, a photo essay, to give you an idea of this photo. And it was about his time in Berlin and, you know, what he saw in the current events that he took. So if you have an interest in, you know, maybe this artist's work of Peter Turnley, I'd be more than happy to send that link over. You can ask for the presentation link. And uh, I just want to say thank you because I think we're out of time. But I hope you guys got the spirit of lift and happiness and power that I did. And I would appreciate you guys coming today. And I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much, Zachary. We're really grateful for this conversation that you led about how works of art can lift us up and hopefully give us positive spirit or think about our well-being in different ways. Um, thanks to all of you for joining us today. If uh, you're watching this, um, either on Zoom or on Facebook Live, um, uh, be sure to visit us online, Lehigh University Art Galleries um, at luag.org. Um, and hope you'll join us for future conversations. Take care, everyone, and have a good weekend. And thanks again, Zachary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.